he's not on the DL. I think, but anyway, go online tonight, Google Adam Frazier and ask him to be the Pittsburgh Pirates all-star designee. <laughs> it's very important. It's good for the economy. Um, right? Absolutely. Some people want, um, somebody wants to know. 2021 budget discussion, 22 budget discussion. Jared, you're up. Yes, ma'am. Um, attached to the agenda uh, tonight, and I was previously sent out to the school board members, is an updated budget projection. Um, it matches what is being presented tonight or uh, proposed to be voted on by the full board um, this evening, later on at the full board meeting. Um, it would be our 21-22 budget. Um, it is a continuation of discussions we've been having over the past couple months. Um, but I will just kind of hit a couple points of what have changed um, since our May meeting, our May audit and finance. Um, we do good news, and I send the email out to the board Saturday morning. We have a state budget. Um, I do believe it's possibly even signed today by the governor. Um, significant increases for um, public ed were included in that budget. Um, over, I believe, $300 million was increased to basic ed. A hundred million of that is going to the, I think, the 100 poorest schools in the state, um, while the other two million is running through the state um, public ed formula. Uh, for Indiana, we are seeing an increase of $445,000 to basic ed and $82,000 to special ed. Um, that is probably the largest increases we have seen in our state subsidy and in many years, I did not go back and actually uh, figure that out, but we have not. We've typically been seeing increases around 100, 200,000. Um, when we gotten increases, we've had some freezes or pretty close to freezes um, the past couple of years. Um, last year, we actually saw around a $10,000 decrease, um, which, according to the state, was flat funding. Um, but because of the formula and how some minor pieces of it can change, as a district, we saw a $10,000 increase. Um, so $445,000 is a pretty significant increase for us, as well as $82,000 in special ed. In the budget projections we have been using, we had a $100,000 increase for basic ed and a $25,000 increase for special ed. And that was based on the governor's, um, when he did his budget, um, address back in February where he presents his proposed budget. So even what he proposed back then, we are seeing increases above and beyond that. So good news for public ed and good news for Indiana itself. So um, those are really the two big significant items that have changed since then. Um, on the revenue, everything else has pretty much stayed the same. We did um, lock in our, um, at the end, towards the end of May, we we're certified, we've received our certification for our real estate um, assessment, um, which is pretty much right where we were expecting it to be um, based on the assessment appeals we've had over the past couple of years. We still have three outstanding right now that were filed that just haven't been settled. And when they are settled, we'll go back and affect the 21, 22 um, school year. So. Uh, even though they're not settled going into the school year, once they are, we could issue them, have to issue them a credit based on where we actually are settled. And there are three pretty significant ones um, right now. The worst case scenario based on their assessed value and then what their appeal or their new appraisal is, the district could look at losing another $4.2 million in assessed value. And I've worked that worst case scenario into the budget as is. So, um if we depend on where we settle, we could see a slight increase if you know it is in favor of the district compared to um, some of them working with attorney repack. Um, you know, two of them are Campus Crest and Copper Beach, um, who just had appealed their assessment a couple years ago. Um, we think we have some room in there. We're hoping we have some room in there. Uh, and then the other one is the VFW property or the old VFW golf course um, that is just kind of fresh um, because it just recently sold over the year. So that property owner has the right to appeal their assessment um, because it was just a recent real estate transaction. 
Um, so we're still kind of looking into the basis of that and what his plans are for the property. Um, but again, worst case scenario is what what we budget for. Um, it can only go up from there. So. Yes, at this point we did um, because of where we're at. We're June 28th, which is very close to the end of our year. Um, we finished our payroll accruals. Um, so we have a pretty good idea where payroll is going to end up. And we also just booked our last month of benefits. Um, we always pay benefits pretty much a month ahead of time. So we booked all those into our system. So I was able to, on this projection, pretty much update as far as expenses go, where salary and benefits will end up. Now, that's not to say as we work through the year-end process and the audit process that there may not be some minor adjustments um, in between lines or that my number may go up or down, but that is, I would say, probably 98% of a chance that that is where we will end up as far as payroll um, and benefits go. And the So that did increase that amount a little bit. Um, and then we will be working through, you know, everything else on there is as we get the final bills, we'll have a better idea. July is a, is always a busy month for getting previous year bills in and paying those, but we will be working through that. Hopefully by the end of August, have an even better number for you as we get those final bills in, work out the final charter school bills, everything from the previous year. So, But based on, on those projections right now, the budget, as I emailed the board, sits a, a deficit balance of um, $1.3 million, which is... Um, and that probably dropped a little bit since the basic debt and the special ed yes. increase. So you know, a week ago, yeah. Meeting. Yep, a week ago sitting here, we would have been talking about a 1.7. Right, so that's a big, um, big drop. And then we still have, maybe you mentioned this, seven almost seven and a half million in yes sir yeah i mean at the, at the end of the year. projected at the end of this year it's you know it's eight point will actually be 8.7 and that's prior to any if you know the board has been having discussions the committee has been having discussions on transferring money to the capital reserve but that 8.7 is the balance projected even prior to that so, so yes for this year but then next year yes for next year it would be the 7.5 yes yep and then we did in conversation with mr vukovic we added um an additional teaching position in for next year just look you know we as we go through this process we are constantly watching our enrollments mainly at the elementaries at the secondary as well um but as we're still trying to work through the number of teachers that we will need for ideal compared to classroom teachers we wanted to make sure we leave ourselves somewhat of a cushion in there so the position is in there in the budget if we need it if we don't fill it then that would you know um, not be expenditures that would come off that deficit as well so we just wanted to make sure we had it in there in case we get to late july august and see the need for it um that we're not trying to already take you know two months into school will be taking from the budgetary reserve a full teaching position so if i can add two things one uh, please talk in the microphones we got a comment um via uh, someone attending hybrid that they can't hear us too well so just a, a gentle reminder about that no ma'am they're on automatically so we should be good there and then the second reminder with our second update is Again, we're not. We're going to wait till hire at the last minute. Right now, we are issued a survey to our families about if they're, whether or not they're coming back. Those students in elementary who are synchronous. Of the 120, 60 people responded. Of the 60 people who responded, 58 said they're coming back. So we're just going to wait. I know I don't like to do that, but we want to wait and see who we need for ideal synchronous and who we need for in-person learning. So right now, we're under the class guidelines, which are not um, set in stone by law. It's just our guidelines. We're still underneath that, but we're hovering close. So the motion we're asking for tonight is permission to post, interview, and advertise uh, for three up to three elementary positions. We may only need one. We may need none. But I'd rather be in a position where we've done all that work and interviewed. So if we need it, we're ready to strike in um, July or August rather than starting that whole process. And so it, we are asking for it. We're just going to go slow to go fast. We're going to see if we need the positions. And we're going to see how the rest of the surveys come in from those families who are once um, asynchronous at the elementary level synchronous to coming back. In two of those positions, you know, I said we added one in, but two of those positions had already been approved by the board 
for the synchronous positions, we had just, based on elementary class size, been able to move two elementary teachers into the synchronous positions. So basically in the budget now, we have three open elementary positions if we need them. Um, but like Mr. Vukovic said, we're going to keep eye, our eye on the enrollments and who's synchronous and who's not. And you asked, well, why didn't you just leave it at um, synchronous? We wanted to be kind of clear with the public. We don't know what we're doing. <laughs> we don't know if it's going to be two um, computer media instructor teachers and one elementary or not. So we thought the three and two gives us a lot of leeway to decide what we need best. And we'll bring that forward. Once we hire, if we hire, then we can eliminate the other positions or not simply not just fill them. But we want to wait and see what the result of the survey come in. Again, right now we got half the respondents in and you know, what 98% of them are coming back. So we want to prepare for that. We're going to probably see a spike in uh, grade two is one that's jumping out to us, but we're not certain yet. We just want to wait and see a little bit. I know it's not the best strategy, but I'd rather do that than to rush into it. Okay, questions from Mike or Jeremy. So our motion's going to be, by the way, on motion 8.2C, our total assessed value of the district is, it always surprises me, it's almost $2 billion. So it's about one point, hi Tom. It's about $1.9 billion. But this, they're, that the assessment office and the markets are saying our district is worth. I think that's a little bit inflated, but I, I If you're okay with it, Madam Vice President, I added the elementary teacher positions under Ms. Lowry's um, committee. I know we didn't talk about it then, but I just thought it fit well there under that committee, but it will be under six. I believe that'll be 6.4. So, yeah. You're okay with that? Mm -hmm. That's yeah. All righty. In the interest of... Um, so we're going to move ahead. I see here no objections to the budget. A pretty, which in a downtime, this is this is terrific, really good. So I'm pleased. Yeah, exactly. Um, I'm in the interest of time. We're going to come. Um, I'm going to hold Homestead off to last because that's pretty self-explanatory. But the the um, I'd like to move next on number three and number six, six in tandem. So if we could move to the. Um, uh, let's look at the um, capital improvements and deferred maintenance list. And um, Jared, do you want to talk to us about this uh, proposed capital reserve budget, please? Yeah, it's we've been discussing this capital reserve, I think, at audit and finance the last meeting, buildings and grounds here this month. So we've been revising as we've been coming through. This is really just the final draft. We, I've updated a couple things um, from our discussion of the buildings and grounds um, last week, I believe. Uh, so we have, you know, I moved some of the items that were in number three, the stage rigging. I moved that up um, with stage repairs. We added the public address system, an actual amount to start working on that. I believe at the high school is where the most need is. And we'll be um, working with the maintenance department on that over the next year. Uh, I'm trying to think of what other new items were on there the and i'm sorry the east pike um floor replacement in the multi-purpose room um, we've now added and gotten estimates for the abatement of that floor and also the replacement of it so that is on there and we will be working to get that in place um, the replacement of that um, hopefully for next summer so um, I, I just taught these up in my head but it looks like we have about I don't know, what is it, $600,000 on the number ones? If you take out the East Pike roof we can add it back in, we could be close to that 1.3. And then if we reserve more, because, you know, we don't want to drain this, I don't think, entirely, but, you know, it's possible that the East Pike roof won't go as well as we hope. But as I remember, we had been putting 800000 in. Or seven hundred fifty thousand, and so now you're at eight hundred on the roof. It was right around seven fifty, and in that we, you know, we were close to. We, we pretty much got bids and prices um, for the roof this summer, so that's what I updated it to the eight hundred thousand based on the most recent pricing we had. So, I mean, I don't. My, it's my understanding, Terry, that we don't have to reserve uh, tonight, but we can certainly alert him to the fact that. You know, and uh, Cinda as well, to the fact that we might be taking with the seven hundred and fifty thousand dollar carryover, we may want to reserve a quarter of a million dollars. We could do that tonight, I think. 
but I don't know if you want to get totted up by, by the time you're done totting up all your figures for year end. And we're not, you know, we're here, but we're not, things happen. And in, in what we did last year, we could do something similar. If you're, you're looking for a way to fund these Pike Roof from, you know, the general fund balance is when we got towards the end of the audit and got mostly the final numbers, then the board took a vote on transferring money from the general fund to capital reserve where you would pay for the East Pike group without having to reserve money in the general fund. Um, we did, I believe, $900,000 last year. We transferred into the capital reserve. Um, it's not shown on here because this is the 21-22 budget, but that's why you have a balance, uh, as you do right now, the 1.1 carrying over from previous year. Um, but we could do something similar to that um, and the board can wait till they get better, till we get better numbers for where we're ending. Prudent, while you have money, I like to spend it. Uh, Tom, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, we won't be um, putting that roof on this season. So it's not going to happen until next June at the earliest. So I think we have a lot of time to, 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 to let it sit for a while um, as it is, knowing we can move the 750 over to cover it if we want to do that. We also can do the bidding and everything else before the June, before the school's out, and pay for it in June in the next budget. But there is something about the discipline of the board knowing this has to be done. Um, Cinder, what do you think about it one way or the other? It doesn't make any difference. We've got money, but I think this roof, you've been talking about it in your committee, and I believe that it is, we need to get it done, and it just seems to have expedited. So you're right. We don't have to do anything. I'm fine with that. Do you have any... Um, so, um, so uh, Terry, your feelings about it? I think the question is, do we reserve tonight or not? Yeah, I, I think I have it circled on my, and I knew we'd talk about it tonight. And uh, I appreciate everybody thinking that we should do it. Uh, I'm just wondering if, Tom, I think we could still do it this year if the contractors were available. Yeah. You know, if, well, if we could have it done by the end of September. What I'm telling you is that the contractor is probably not available to do a bunch of different sides at this point in the year. Um, we don't know that. So no. I talked to I talked to C.E. Davis, who has done a number of roofs for us. And while I needed a shingle roof for my house, he said, I'll be very happy to do it for you in July, July of 2022. So they're extremely busy. Tom is absolutely right. They're ex well, I think that tells me that we should get it get on the list now. Then. At which, which, yes, if, if there's a way to start this process to, to accelerate it, I, and I've also tried other, again, my project is much simpler than, than what this one is, but I'm even having trouble with these guys returning my phone calls, let alone um, actually getting them to, tell me anything intelligent okay so um i think we probably ought to throw out that we put a motion on not tonight's agenda the next board meeting's agenda that, that cheney or whoever is to go out and uh, solicit that uh, unless they could do it you never know you you know i know walter had that experience but you know, if you want to do it after the school's out, it's fine. Don't put any more details. There's too much noise. There's too much debris. No, I think what we do is get the RFP out, get that moving, and uh, get the quotes in, and we come back and bring it to the board, and then let's see what their time frame is. But let's move but, forward at least. But there's, there's a real concern about, about tearing the roof off over top of a finishing school. Agreed. And we think the logic probably is we're not, we'll just, we want to get in the queue. We probably won't get anything done until May or June of next year anyways, but at least get in the queue. I think what I'm hearing the board correct. And I think we could act by July 12th. I think we have a lot of the quotes um, in place ready to go, but let us work on that. We'll have something ready for July 12th. Fair enough. Well, I think we need to decide whether we want to do state contract or do you want to do a formal bid and put bid docs together three weeks of bidding. If I can weigh in, I think the state contract's the way to go. You know, you're going to spend a lot more money um, getting the bids ready and getting that done, have some engineer look at it. If the state bid's already done that work, I, I don't know why we wouldn't look at it. As far as the school itself, I agree absolutely with you 100%. Because there's very little additional that, that unit over the old office 
may need some 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 attention. I get that, but I still think there may be cheaper way to to fix the AC over this one, different than what was the current system we had. So I, I'm okay with the with the school right away, quick as we can. State contract, simple, quick, easy. Go for it. I just I want to. I think Carrie, you ought to. Your committee ought to at least have a take a look at this to see if there's a better way to go. Well, with if you recall just recently with ESCO, they had laid out what types of roofs we should put where. Um, you, you know, do you remember over the cafeteria they said it had to be a certain type yeah. because of the weight distribution and. The, and just a reminder, um, we're still getting some comments through the chat uh, that they can't hear. So I, I don't, sorry to be a pest about that. But there's just a couple of comments in the chat. The chat. Sorry about that. <laughs> Drake's still working or is he done? He's on vacation. He's coming back for another couple of weeks or something. One day. One day. <laughs> okay. <laughs> were, were you involved when he was looking at the getting the, the bids for the roofs and stuff? No, I don't know. Probably want to pick his brain. So on that day that he's back yeah. and see if he has some notes. Terry, Terry, you may need to speak more directly into the mic. mechanical system upstairs right right now we're carrying a million dollars for that right for for this 12,000 14,000 feet and just it doesn't make any sense well Shane yeah. you have your work cut out for your first week on the job yeah. Sorry, the first month on the job. Yeah. yeah I can imagine but this is a big part I think this is a big priority to try to get this building figured out so we get it off our it's it's a headache so let's just get and we have some money Tammy Blank or Uta do you have any thoughts about it before we move on Mr. Kerr, if you'll give it, let me, Cheney, and Jared talk, look at some options. We'll get something out to the board of uh, proposed course of action. The board can decide if they want to move forward with the different, uh, there seems to be different facets. One, the roof, two, the air conditioning. So, and three, you, I, if I'm hearing you correctly, you feel comfortable with the state bid though for the roof? I'd say check with Greg. Sure. He did the last bidding and estimates. And, yeah. Cafeteria or the yeah. Chain, do you feel comfortable? We meet tomorrow and then because yeah. I don't want to misspeak. I don't know where we're at with those quotes. Maybe we can just reconvene, see where we're at, and give an update to the board tomorrow. But here's what we know, here's our options, and give some sort of recommendation to the board that they have till now until some from then until July twelfth to you know, weigh in. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Is that okay with you, Mr. Kerr? Madam Vice President? We have Tam, you Tim? So we're all okay. Okay. I don't know who's out on TV land. Go ahead. I have a question about the um, old office space. What did we ever decide is going to happen with that? What kind of air conditioning needs are we going to have? Are we going to replace those units? Because that was a big discussion with the last roofing thing. And then the other thing is the administrative wing. Was it finally determined that it is can be treated as a totally separate roof? That was an issue with the ESCO thing. I think they were saying it's all one roof, but it's yeah. not. Is that going to come into anything at all? There's a the fire wall between here and the school breaks through the roof. That would be the logical place for it to stop. Okay, so that's not going to. We can very definitely talk about doing the roof over the school. I think. Jamie, but do we still need to come up with a definite yeah. plan of air conditioning units over the old office? Is that still? Yeah, I think we're still. Question mark. Yeah, we're still having discussions as to what that new old office space would look like. Absolutely, yeah. So the new, the, the remodeled, renovated office space and its machinery will be um, set up for that space. Not, we don't have to replace 17 companies and then do it. So we'll do it all at once. <laughs> Is that going to cause an issue with the bid on the roof, though? They're going and, to be removing the old the ones? Re the reason to have a professional involved is that these things could be solved. And the reason you say you need more of those fees. So, so you have to make some decision. I would have 
if I was in charge of the project, I would have to bump the machine off the roof and quit. We don't want the machine back, it's too big. And and then install install the new machine and then we forgot what the machine was. That's part of that one. Do you, uh, Mr. Cheney, do you risk um, increased cost by treating them as two separate projects? What's your thoughts or advice on it? I mean, you are the director of facilities and maintenance. What's your thoughts on the project? If you're okay, Madam Vice President, let us look at it tomorrow. We can give a yeah, proposed course of action. I would appreciate it if you all would make these issues a priority. But send, um, send us comment and Terry concern because this has been ongoing and the ESCO kind of confused it. But if you could, because we want to, we want to get in line because it needs to be done and we have the funds right now. So um, we'll, we'll expect a report, I guess, at Terry's meeting, and um, so you'll you'll be on that. Okay. I would like to say um, on this maintenance list, it's not. But I did drive by the new turf and um, down at the high school, and uh, I thought it looked beautiful. I'm assuming we're all on schedule and we're going to be finished in time. Oh yeah, they're moving quick. Kenny, and would you like to add in? But to me, they're moving incredibly fast. And Madam Vice President, if I can, I apologize for our listeners. I'm receiving some uh, messages again that they can't hear us. Randy will come up during exec session and double check everything. But for those who are here, we apologize. The recording will be online for people who can watch it. But we'll, we'll try to address that technical difficulty at halftime. Okay. So um, I'll try to speak a little more with more force. Um, hopefully that will help. But um, Jared, you'll let us know if it goes under over budget in any way. The, the uh, turf. The turf. Yeah, I mean, there's been no change orders or anything. We have an agreed contract to the price that the the board approved already. So. Okay, let's move to the. Um, I want to talk about the um, uh, insurance. Is that on here? Wait a minute. Where did I see that? Yes, ma'am. We have number, a motion number four. on the insurance. Yeah, the insurance rates. So I had sent you some questions. So, any about the motions on here to renew. Insurance coverage for the year package policies it all amounts to um, 100 and $275,000. That seems to be pretty much in line with what it was the last time. Yes, ma'am. Last year it was 278000 I mean, it's typically right around there. Um, we're seeing a slight decrease this year. Some of the, the policies have gone up or down. The biggest one that decreased was our workers' comp. Um, we quoted that out to uh, two different vendors this year, and um, because of that, we were able to recognize a decrease of around ten thousand dollars. So, which helped to offset some of the other ones slightly um, increasing. And we're still going to use Riskini. That's who's managing this portfolio. Riskini is our broker, yes, and then they they along with myself work on you know bidding it out, getting looking at different insurance providers. Um, and then we work together to um, pick which providers we would like to go with. So, and you know, they have a fairly large book of business, so they do have some pull uh, to help us with those rates. And they really were a huge help with the workers' comp um, to get us a, such a favorable rate this year. Any questions? Any objections? Okay, I want to move next to the um, this six thousand dollar proposal to facilitate. Um, engaged uh, strategy solution and the amount not to exceed $6,000 to facilitate the committee meetings regarding the discussion of the future grade configuration and facility usage of Indiana Area School District. 
Further, the board authorizes the administration to engage Rodney Green. And if we all remember Rodney Green, he helped us um, a super, he was um, acting superintendent when Dale was out for a while, did a terrific job. And then more recently, um, he helped us find Mr. Vukovic. Which I think he did a tremendous job. He did a <laughs> <laughs> Funny you would say that. <laughs> Just saying. So I think he's been a great asset to the district um, in, in many instances. So um, I think you've all had an opportunity to hear the comments about this uh, organization. Um, and Tom and Walter, I think you were particularly involved in, um, well, Terry, well, all of no, it, was, it wasn't, it wasn't, I think, I think Tom and Terry were the two that uh, actually did some preliminary work with them. Um, you know, so give credit there where credit is due. So, Terry, do you have a comment? And then we'll go to Tom since you're on the committee. Yeah, I think, and we'll talk about this, of course, more at the board meeting, but, you know, Tom and I met with them over by phone. I think last Thursday, we only met with them for 30 to 40 minutes. Uh, just gave them some high level, you know, comments and stuff about the district. And they have worked with Indiana Regional Medical Center and the Indiana Library recently. So they're a little bit familiar with the community. And then their proposal that they put together, I thought was very satisfactory, uh, being that we only talked with them for, you know, like I said, 30 or 40 minutes. And, and I think the price is reasonable. I think they have a, you know, just talking with them, they have a very uh, fair and, and transparent approach to their, what they do. And this is what they do for a living, so. Tom, you want to chime in there? I'll echo Terry's comments. Um, um, I was impressed with their, uh, um, with the work they've done in communities um, like ours um, on these very questions. Um, and uh, um, they were very enthusiastic. Uh, they seemed like they know what they were doing and um, they came highly recommended by, by people that I know in, in planning. So um, I, I was, I was thrilled with the, with the, with the, uh, Terry says it's a 30 minute conversation. I'm amazed how, how close they got to what we actually need in 30 minutes. And so I'm, I, I like to get the details finished out and fleshed out and, and get these thing, get these thing moving. We're going to make a series of decisions here. Even if we don't make a series of decisions, if, if we, even if we don't change anything that will affect the district for decades and having some professional guidance, I think is really useful. I think, so. I think it's a great idea. And I think based on that proposal is so, you know, for that price, Cinda, do you, as a member of the committee, do you um, have any thoughts about it? I have lots of thoughts. Um, so one thing I was pleased to see that they had worked with somebody from the community. Did anybody reach out to the library or to the hospital to talk to them about how, how it worked out for them? No, I did. I think that might be a wise thing to do just to cover all the bases and see what's going on. We could do a pending. I mean, I think to move forward, based on our aggressive schedule, um, maybe tomorrow you could have somebody call. And if we get a negative report, we can handle it. But I kind of have a feeling, is that, would that be okay? I would just like, I would like, some, I would like some references from somebody other than from them. Okay. That's like Mike saying that Rod did a really good job. He did. <laughs> <laughs> Proof's there. <laughs> Proof's in the pudding. Yeah. Okay. Tammy and Cinda, are you okay with Cinda's um, condition? Yeah. I just think that um, I know the district has some information that um, from previous conversations and previous research that was done on some of this. And I think it's only fair to just give that to whoever is going to help facilitate this so we're not recreating the wheel and spending valuable time doing something that's already been done. And we told them that whenever we met with them that there had been previous reports and consultants work on some different things. So, Tammy? Um, yeah, I, I just, uh, I'm sitting back and letting it flow over me. I'm over you all over. Okay. Okay. Good. I'll um. <laughs> <laughs> Walter, any comments you want to make? Uh, the only thing, uh, number one, I think if they can bring this level of professionalism to this, I think it's critical. Um, I also think then it allows all 10 of us then to be participants rather than trying to lead lead that conversation. Um, 
I also think that, you know, one of the issues, of course, is perception. And and if this is an outside agency that is kind of leading that and, and trying to pull information out of the various groups in the community, the, I think the perception would be that it is a, we're trying to make this a fair process. Um, so I see a great value in, in having them involved from that perspective as well. Thank you. Yeah, um, well, Senda, you, yeah, I, go ahead. That is very important because the other thing that's very important too is the information that they're given about what we want in our situation. It's there, there are two sides to every situation and we need to be as open and honest as we can be from the, all directions. The, the only thing that I do want to comment uh, in, in as far as the general flow goes here while there seems to be a certain sense of urgency, the primary reason that there's a certain sense of urgency to try to hire these guys maybe a little faster than we normally would or to, to compress their timeline is that until the board makes whatever decision it's going to make different than maybe what we have for the current configuration, any s delay in doing that pushes back the work that then gets started at um, at Eisenhower as, as far as the, the restoration, renovation, additions, whatever. The, the problem is then if you don't try to get this thing moving by early fall, then we probably will miss the building season for next year, which means that Eisenhower could be idled um, another full school year, regardless of which, or a portion of that school year, regardless of what decision the board would make. So there's a, I think there's a certain, as to, um, it, Mike says, go slow to go fast. Well, we need to kind of go a little fast here to, to kind of get this thing going so that we can go slow to go fast in the, in the future. But, but to me, that's the one thing that's causing this sense of urgency is, to try to get whatever work we're going to do at Eisenhower completed by the beginning of next uh, school year, uh, September of 2022. Yeah, and also... Uh, it, uh, oh, just one second, yeah, Julia. The caveat is, if this is really uncomfortable for the board, okay, and they want to slow it down, I'm okay with that as long as everybody nods their head and says, September 22 is probably not when Eisenhower would open again. That's 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 the issue. Or that's the caveat for me. Well, okay. Um, Jared's good. We're, his task, I think, from the point of view of what the what the committee's going to do here, is that we were told by our bond people that daylight's a wasting here on those monies. So we have to um, the Ben Franklin monies. So um, we 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 are, you know. A little bit of pressure here to um, to to be as disciplined as we can and as efficient as we can with issue management, um, and that's why I think we need to to have a facilitator. I, I agree with that, but I don't take that lightly from this committee's point of view, and I want to be clear about that. So, Jared, we're tasking you with making sure that we, on our schedule with this committee, that we know what our what bogeys we have to hit. You know. okay. Anything else? Okay, uh, finally we have, um, so it's now 6.13. I think in two minutes, Jerry, can you make a couple of comments about the uh, Homestead farm, uh, Farmstead resolution, which is pretty straightforward. Yeah, absolutely. That's just our typical resolution that is approved after the budget and the millage rate is set. Um, it is the credit that goes on every taxpayer that is eligible for the Homestead Farmstead program. This year, the maximum credit is $190.68. Um, it's pretty much right in line within a dollar or two of where the, the credit typically is in, in every single year. So our amount from the state that we get is within $1,000 of what we normally get. So our credit is right there as well. So very good. Any questions for Jared? Anything for the good of the order? All righty. Thank you very much. We'll adjourn.